Tonight, I'm going to show you a really pretty textured hairstyle. So uh, my bride who had this style wanted a very, wanted a kind of effortless look. She was having a very small wedding, beautiful wedding dress, very small wedding. And she wanted to look absolutely gorgeous. And um, I did her hair and makeup. So uh, I made sure she did look gorgeous. Now, if you have any questions as we go through the tutorial, please just type your questions in the chat box and hopefully I will be able to see them on my laptop here and I will be able to reply. So um, yeah, just type your questions in. I'm here to help. If you have any questions about, could be about tonight's bridal hairstyle or setting up your business or anything about bridal, working as a bridal hairstylist, that's my speciality and I'm here to help. So let's begin. I've already done a little bit of hair prep on this practice head. So she does have a few kind of extensions in here. You can see a couple of different tones, a couple of different colors in the hair. Um, now, we also have an online course. So it's not so easy when we do the live tutorials for me to kind of, you know, to zoom in so you can see up close and personal exactly what I'm doing. Uh, but we do have an online course where you can, where everything's kind of filmed in HD and you've got everything's kind of step by step going from the hair prep right through to the finished style. So if you do want to learn a little bit more and see a little bit more about what I'm doing, then please join me for my online training course. Um, we've got some information again in, the, in our profile, but tonight's style, a lovely little half up, half down style with a few little twists in the hair. Now what I did do with my bride and what I've done with the practice head is I crimped the hair very gently first of all, just so we got some root lift and a little bit of natural looking movement here. And then I curled the hair, you could use straighteners, or tongs, but you want to get a little bit of a soft curl in the hair. Unless, of course, your lady would like a wave, in which case you would kind of curl, you still need to curl the hair, but slightly differently. And we do have tutorials showing you how to create both waves and curls. So maybe have a quick look at one of those tutorials if you're not sure. And this time what my client had, she didn't have a parting, the hair came straight back. So I have decided on this practice head that I wanted a little bit of hair kind of down and sweeping back at the sides. And then we're going to have our section coming back here for the center. So I've curled these two and I've actually, when I wrapped them up, I actually kind of over directed them. So we got a little bit of natural root lift here on these two sections, just to help that give a little bit of height coming back. So it really, it really would depend on your client's face shape, how much hair you pull back and how much hair you leave down. But on this particular practice head, on this lady here, I think she suited a little bit more hair down and just a little pan, a quite a narrow panel coming back here. So the products I've used, I used our Urban Decay, sorry, yeah, Fudge Urban Sea Salt Spray. And I've also used a little bit of, if I was on my client, I also used a little bit of L'Oreal spray mousse at the root. But if, like me, during lockdown, you're working on a practice head, I wouldn't recommend putting mousse in the practice head. The salt spray is more than enough because the hair is already quite coarse. So you're going to prep the hair, first of all, with your salt spray. And then you're going to crimp through the hair and then curl with a little bit of I used a tong today, but you could use straighteners. And, oh, let's have a look. We've got a question. Let's have a look. Ah, great. Thank you. Hi, girls. <laughs> this is exciting. I love doing these online tutorials. So any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Hi, Adrienne. Hi, Adj. And um, if you have any styles that you particularly want to learn, then please let me know because I'll, I'll choose them. I'll create them for one of our tutorials a future tutorial. So we had one of our ladies, one of our subscribers, one of our many subscribers we've got now on YouTube, because I think we're now kind of up to 
almost 12,000, I think, which is fantastic. So thank you to all of you that have subscribed. And if you're just watching and you haven't subscribed yet, then why not do it now? So um, anyway, one of our subscribers, I think it was Natalie, asked me to do a Bridgerton hairstyle. I don't know if you've seen Bridgerton, but it's absolutely fabulous. I've loved it. So we might do a Bridgerton hairstyle next week. Not that necessarily lots of people are going to want lots of curls, but I did notice on Daphne in one scene, she had kind of like a little kind of waterfall braid coming around the back. Very simple and exquisite. I can't remember which scene it was, but I remember noticing it and thinking, aha, they've got a braid in the hair. So, um, yeah, and maybe next week we'll do a Bridgerton hairstyle. But do let me know if you've got any styles that you want to learn. So this product here that I'm using now is my Goldwell Creative Texture Super Ego Structure Cream. It's got a long name, but we will put the products in the link. And this is really good, actually. And what I'm doing is just creating these little kind of pieces sections. So you can see we've got the height here. Hopefully you can see, oh, I tilt her up. You, you can see where we've got the height, where I've over-directed the hair as I've, when I prepped it. So we've got a little bit of height here. And then what the structure cream does is it just gives that kind of pieciness and a little bit of texture to the hair. So now, I actually, I could have done a little bit here at the back. If she wants a little bit of height, you could also over-direct the hair on the crown here as well. In fact, I might just push that up just a little bit and pop a bobby pin on there. So, yes, if you've watched Bridgerton, maybe you love it as much as I did. And uh, the lead, is it Simon? Oh, my God, the Duke. He's gorgeous. So anyway, we won't be, he, you know, we might think of something to do next week as a hairstyle, as a tribute to Bridgerton. It's been as Natalie did ask for that, but uh, ask for a style from there. So I think, why not? So I'm just going to bring this hair back. Now, don't worry about this getting a little bit kind of fluffy and fly away here. And we just want to kind of pin it fairly centrally. Now I'm going to try and get in the center here. Let's just check. Yep. And then just pop a bobby pin just across the back. Sometimes when I create these styles online, because and I'm working with a mirror here just off camera, but every time actually, not sometimes when I create these styles online, because I'm standing to one side, they always end up slightly kind of a bit skew with. But don't worry about that. Let's imagine that they're all perfectly symmetrical and central, which they would be if you were working from the back. But then you wouldn't see anything I'm doing. So, um, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. I'm not. I'm going to leave that a little bit because I might use that. We could always recurl it or we might use it for part of our twist. And then let's do this one. Got a bit of product on the back of my hand. And... We can separate the hair, bring these pieces back one at a time, or if she wants it smoother. You know, I know we create a lot of textured styles at the moment, but not everybody will want their hair to be textured. You know, some people might want it to be a little bit smoother and sleeker. So always check with your clients, a little smear of product on my fingers. So always check first. Make sure you ask whether they prefer a smooth, sleek look or a more kind of textured finish. That's better. Lovely. Just checking in the mirror, bringing that back. So I hope you're all kind of coping okay if you're on lockdown where you are. So lift that one up a little bit. Lovely. And hopefully soon we'll all be free. People will be able to get married again, we'll be able to go out to restaurants again. Okay, 
So I'll just, oh, let me turn her around so you can see what I'm doing. So I brought this hair back to the center again, making sure that I'm happy with the position of each of these little sections. And then I'll pop a bobby pin just across the back. Make sure when you pop these bobby pins in that they're nice and secure, that you get that bobby pin. It needs to, you need to kind of push against the scalp a little bit so you can get it, you know, so it picks up a little bit of the hair close to the scalp so it's not kind of free and kind of floating around. Okay. So my lady had all her hair brought back. But what you do, if, you, if she wants the kind of center panel brought back, if you create the twist too early, then when you bring the center panel back, you will cover all the work that you've created here. So if you know you're bringing everything back, and make a little note in your wedding planner. So when I do my trial, I always take kind of really detailed notes. It's good to take photographs as well, but it's good if you kind of make detailed notes so that you know exactly the order that you're going to be working with each section of hair. So now I'm gonna come back to these side sections, which do need curling. And I'm going to give a little twist. Whoops, let's just turn her around. But they might not need curling too much because these are going to be actually twisted, brought back. And so I'm going to twist and pull. A little bit of product to make sure it's all nice and smooth. A little twist and pull. And you can make these as loose or as kind of tight as you like. But this is only quite a small section of hair. So I am going to make it quite loose so it looks a little bit thicker. So what I need now, let me just get the right pins. So now all I need is, I'm using a little fine uh, hairpin. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing and I'm just propping the hair up in position so I can see exactly where it is, where it's going to sit when I finish. Actually, is more what I should say. So that means then I'm free to come back and continue. Let's just turn this around a little bit and continue to do the twist here. This might be a little bit high, but now we do have that's better. Tutorials online on our e-learning course where you can see kind of in a lot of detail, you can see much closer and much clearer exactly what I'm doing here and how you're propping the hair up. So as I say, if you do find you want to learn and find out a little bit more how to create these lovely, soft, relaxed styles, but yet still have everything really secure. And I would definitely recommend, and if you find that the, the live tutorials aren't quite detailed enough for you, then you can always join me online where we have our online course. I'm just twisting the hair and I'm gonna bring this back and drop that below with a little twist and pull. So you can learn how to prep the hair using crimpers as I've used tonight. And let's see, it's not so easy to do with my left hand, but let me just give it a go and switch hands. That's a bit better. I'm kind of in the wrong position, but that's okay. Let's see. Now let's pop this in. Now what you have to let me turn this around and you can see what I'm trying to do. When you're creating these styles, you kind of not try and be careful not to just concentrate too much on the back or only on the back, I should say, because I don't know if you can see here, but there's a kind of gap in the hair. And I think it would look better if the hair, all these kind of, all this kind of texture was kind of going in the right direction, all in the same direction just until we start the twist. So there's not kind of big gaps. And it, stand, it stands out more, it's, it particularly stands out when you've got um, highlights or color and tones in the hair. So try to keep an eye on the tones in the hair, the colors and where everything is sitting. 
so that when it comes to the end of the star, that looks so much better already. It's a small detail, but it makes a big difference. Okay, let's come back. And twist a little bit more. And I've just popped a little pin in here, just so that knows it's got to stay there while I keep working on the rest of the hair here. Is there any more questions coming in? I don't think so. Now, I think probably I could have brought these maybe a little bit lower, but it might look nice. So that's the kind, again, that's the kind of detail that you would need to make. But before, actually, you know what, before I secure that in place, I'm going to let that go for a minute. I'm actually going to secure this first twist in place. Because otherwise, if I start covering it up, it's going to be hard to get underneath that other twist. So in with the bobby pin, secure that, this twist in position, keeping the grip nice and securely underneath the hair. That's it. Now we can come back to this one. Better, much better. And now we know the style's secure because it's no point creating this lovely textured style if it's not secure. Now it's very easy, or I should say it's easier to create these styles, this kind of style for a photo shoot, because of course the style doesn't have to be massively secure. Your model just has to get to the set, have her pictures taken, and then you're probably gonna change the style or she's gonna change her outfit. But when we're working with our brides, everything has to be really secure. First of all, you've got to get a veil in there and the wedding's done, the hair's done quite early in the day. So she's going to be wearing a veil. And at the moment, so I'm just looking for my bobby pins. At the moment, um, the fashion is for quite long, cathedral length veils so even if your style is very soft and relaxed it needs to be super secure so when the veil goes on oops let's just pop that push that in underneath the hair so when the veil goes on better it doesn't swell the hair and it's secure let me just see what I put in there that's better yeah Okay, so now I'm going to use some of these fluffy flyaway bits that we created before. I'm actually going to create some more twists just to finish the style off. So not only has the veil got to go in, a bit of spray on there because it's just a touch flyaway. A bit of spray wax might be good on any of these little flyaway bits if you're struggling. So the hair's got to stay up and uh, let's see, get a bit more product I think. It's got to stay up for the veil going on, the veil going off, dancing, well <laughs> at the moment maybe not dancing because I don't think we're allowed to, when they, I know before Christmas when people were allowed to get married they could only have very small ceremonies. And no, I think the bride and groom can dance, but the music can't be loud. And uh, so there's not a lot of dancing at the moment, but I'm sure there will be. And you want to definitely want to be in the habit of being able to create beautiful, soft, relaxed hairstyles that are secure. So you don't want to create a style and it looks, looks gorgeous, but she feels like she can't move in case it falls down. Let's just create a little twist here, I think. Might be a little bit big. That's better. That's it. Smooth that down a little bit and create a little twist. You can just kind of be a bit creative here with the rest of the hair and work out how much hair you want to twist. Twist and pull. That's it. You can pop your little pins in to hold these sections in place. That 
that's it. You can use little fine pins if you find it easier. I'm using some bigger pins, which hopefully you can see. Just keep twisting that little bit. And I might take that up and over there. Let's have a little look. That's it. And finish off your style. So once you've done, actually done the hair prep, this is actually, I mean, it is a gorgeous style for a bride, but it's also a really pretty style for a bridesmaid. Once you've done the hair prep, it doesn't take very long at all. And, you know, if you're going to curl with straighteners, if you, you don't have to do the crimping, first of all. You could just... Uh, curl the hair with straightness. If you're running a little bit short on time, then you could pop a bit of salt spray through the hair. Pop a little bit of salt spray through the hair and then maybe you could curl the hair with straighteners, which is always really quick. And then you're ready to create your style. And if the hair is a little bit too soft, then you can always put a little bit of dry shampoo in there. And that's a kind of quick, easy way to get texture in the hair if you're running short of time. Okay, these, these little bits are a bit small, I think, for this little job here. Let's see if we can make a little twist out of them. Yeah, and then I'm going to put some... Actually, you know what? I think I might leave those bits down and curl up. I think it'll look better. It's almost, almost too small to want to go up. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a curl. Let's make sure these are on. Yeah. Just use my wand just to curl the end of the hair here so it blends with the rest of the hair. You want to make sure that your style is finished. So if, you, if the bits of hair are too small to kind of create a twist with, then you can always curl them so it blends into the rest of the hair. And then these little pins, you can either pin them, push them in if you've put them in kind of at the right angle so, they go, so they're invisible, or that's it, they're going in behind the pins that I've got at the back there, or if you find they're not really doing anything, you can take them out. A couple more here. And these are all holding the hair up nicely. I don't think we need that one, so I'll take that one out. So I've got a couple of then little accessories. You can always come back and pull and twist a little bit more if you need to. And let's pop some pretty little accessories in just to finish off. We've got our gorgeous kind of little twisted whoops, updo. Bend that down. Sometimes these little these little sparkly pins are beautiful, but they can catch in the hair, so be careful. So and maybe just one more, I think, under there, maybe, or above there. Under there, I think. In and down. Let me stand here so you can see. And behind. That's it. One of those bobby pins there. Don't want it to squash that little twist there. That's better. You can see a bobby pin there, so I need to move that one. Ah, that's better. So it almost looks like a little... Um, hair vine in the hair so i hope you've enjoyed tonight's tutorial don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can get a little notification for next week's tutorial and as i say if you have any styles you'd like to learn please let me know but there we have our beautiful little kind of twisted updo Whoops, and this, you could do actually do this style. Let's see if I can get this off. 
that's it. You could do this style for somebody who has kind of short hair. It's not a style just for somebody for a bride with long hair. Now you can see here on this side, where I pinned up the hair here, we've got that nice texture and it all kind of is going in the right direction, but it's not quite right here. So I'd need to come back. I should have done this at the time. These things are always easy to correct when you're creating the style. Let's see if we can do this now. So always allow a little bit of time or plenty of time, allow enough time at the end to kind of make sure that everything is correct. But it's always better if you can do this, that's better. As you go along, that's better, much better. Some Stronghold Hairspray. And doing wedding hair is stress-free when you when you have plenty of time and you don't feel rushed and you want and you want to make sure that your bride is happy and your style is secure. So I hope you've enjoyed tonight's tutorial. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great week and uh, yeah, let me know what styles you'd like to learn. I'm here to help. Okay, take care. Bye.